This video will introduce the concept of torsion angles and demonstrate a Python script that will compute them from XYZ files. Okay, so a torsion angle we could define as the angle between two normal vectors between two planes from four distinct points. Okay, so let's break that down. Let's imagine we have a hydrogen peroxide molecule. So this is the simplest type of molecule that could have a torsion angle because we need at least four distinct atoms, four distinct Cartesian points in three dimensions. So we have HOOH. And we know that three points form a plane as long as those points are nonlinear. So that's one restriction in torsions is that uh, points I, J, K have to be nonlinear as do points J, K, L. So if they're nonlinear, then points I, J, K, atoms one, two, and three, they form a unique plane. And J, K, L, if atoms two, three, and four are nonlinear, then they form a unique plane as well. So if we look at this side on, if we're looking down the oxygen-oxygen bond, then what we get from the side is this type of picture. So we get plane I, J, K right here. Our, actually, I think I have reversed the order of the labels here. Let's go ahead and correct that. Much better. We have plane I, J, K over here, and we have plane J, K, L here. And each of those planes we could see having an angle between them. They sort of form a vector here and a vector there. But more, more properly, what we're going to do is we're going to say each of those planes has a normal vector, a vector which is perpendicular to that plane. So this, the perpendicular to this plane would be like this vector, and perpendicular to this plane would be like this vector. So what we're actually computing is the angle between these two normal vectors, vectors that are perpendicular to these two planes. And that forms what we call a torsion angle, also referred to as a dihedral angle. All right, so in order to have a torsion angle or a dihedral in our molecule, what we need are three distinct sets of atoms which are bonded to one another in succession. So we need I to be bonded to J, we need J to be bonded to K, and we need K to be bonded to L. So then phi I, J, K, L, would be the angle between planes IJK and JKL. All right, so in order to do this, we're going to introduce uh, the concept of a cross product of two vectors. So A cross B is going to be another vector which is perpendicular to both vector A and vector B. Both of these vectors need to be uh, they need to be non non parallel. So that's already taken care of as long as these two. Uh, as long as these three atoms and those three atoms are nonlinear. So we need these to be non-parallel vectors. And the cross product is going to give us a vector which is perpendicular to both of them. And it's going to be determined by this type of 3 by 3 determinant, where we have x, y, and z unit vectors, and then the components of each of the two vectors there. So if we expand out this 3 by 3 determinant, what we get is that the x component is ay bz minus az times by. And then each successive component is a cyclic permutation of those three indices, where we have x goes to y, y goes to z in both cases, and z goes to x. Then we have another cyclic permutation to get z, y goes to z, x goes to y, and z goes to x. So that gives us the three Cartesian components of a vector which is perpendicular to both a and b. So this defines a vector which is normal to that plane abc. A unit vector rba is in the plane abc as is unit vector bc. So you can imagine these here as like r hat ji, r hat jk, where I've normalized those vectors. We take the dot product of those two, and then we divide by the sine of the angle <clears throat> between the three atoms. So theta i, j, k here, sine of that, for example. And that will give us a unit vector, which is normal to plane a, b, c. So in general, um, this vector would be perpendicular, but we want to normalize it again by including this sine term on the bottom. So then we have a normal vector 
um, to our plane IJK. We have a normal vector to plane JKL. And the dot product of those two is going to be the cosine of our torsion or dihedral angle phi IJKL. So our torsion angle, once we substitute everything back into our original expressions, torsion angle is going to be the arc cosine of the dot product between the cross products of the unit vector rji, atoms 2, atom 1, r hat jk, atom 2, atom 3, unit vector is both, r hat kj, unit vector 3, uh, unit vector 3, 2, r hat kl, unit vector 3, 4, divided by sine theta ijk, bond angle ijk, times theta jkl, bond angle jkl. All right, so that is quite a mouthful to deal with, and we'll see the functions for doing this are quite a bit more complicated than we had seen previously for our previous types of, uh, of coordinates. Typically, the range of these things, you'll sometimes see them defined from 0 to 360 degrees um, because we have the full range of where this L atom could be relative to this plane. But uh, more typically, you'll see them defined from negative 180 to 180, and that's the uh, custom that I'm going to use. So the range of torsions you see printed out by any programs that I have written and I'm demoing here, those are going to be from negative 180 to 180. Additionally, we have the symmetry that if you reverse the indices, so torsion angle LKJI is equal to torsion angle IKJ or IJKL. So no matter which one you start with and end with, as long as it's the same sequence of atoms, you're going to get the same torsion angle as a result. And then um, this formula is almost complete. Um, there's one sneaking uh, little white lie inside of there. And that's that we need to get the sign uh, from addition, an additional place, the S-I-G-N, positive or negative. The sign of our torsion angle is going to be determined by the sign of our normal vector I-J-K. So for example, that would be this here. The dot product of that with r hat j i. So um, there's an there's an additional caveat in there that if you notice in the code that I'm about to demo is I get the sign from that type of uh, from that type of overlap. Okay, so once again, um, there should be a linear number of torsions in our molecule. You know, n atoms should have something that scales. At, at worst at like n as we go up in number because there's a finite number of bonds each atom can be bonded to so there's a finite number of angles and an even smaller number of torsions we can possibly have and the number of atom quartets that we have would be you know n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 divided by uh, 24 um, if I believe correctly so there's a quartic number of atom quartets. So again, we're getting to the point where if you go to very large molecules, it starts to get very expensive to exhaustively search through all quartets rather than doing something more clever, which will reduce the scaling of this number. If you're really clever, you can get to where you, the number of comparisons you have to do is only n log n instead of uh, n to the fourth. Okay, and then the last question to be, uh, where do we get the sine of the angle from? Because we've discussed we get cosines from dot products. Well, we have the identity that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. And so we can rearrange that to sine is plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine squared. And additionally, since we're talking about the angle between two things, that's restricted to be from 0 to 180 degrees. The sine from 0 to 180 is always positive, so we're taking the positive square root there uh, for our restriction in this range. Okay, so let's take a look at our program here that we have now in expanded to include uh, torsion. So once again, all of these are on GitHub on my computational chemistry repository if you'd like to download or run any of these scripts in your own Jupyter notebook. Uh, the same notebook which I started using in the bonds or covalent radius video. 
So our torsions program is the same bonds and angles program, but including some extra functions to do some extra things that are necessary, uh, like printing out all of the torsions. Let's see, um, doing cross products between vectors, um, computing the torsion angles, and also searching for all the torsions. You'll notice the algorithm I use here actually searches through the bonds instead of comparing atom quartets. So that should be uh, pretty, pretty much linear there in terms of that comparison time. And then uh, the, all the main block in actually calling all these functions. So let's see. Um, I have an example here for hydrogen peroxide, our simplest type of molecule that can actually have a torsion angle. So if I, let's stop rotating please, um, if I set this to play, what we get here is this is where the bond lengths are staying the same, the bond angles are staying the same, but the only thing that's varying is the torsion. So as I look down here I can see this plane over there, and I can see that plane over there, and you can see the angle between them changing between about um, 80 degrees and about 140 degrees, I'd say. So that's the example of, of what the torsion looks like. Let's see what this is uh, in the hydrogen peroxide molecule that I have. I hit shift enter to run that. These Cartesian coordinates in the original XYZ file uh, give these three bond lengths those two bond angles, and I must have a staggered uh, torsion angle. It's negative 180 degrees. If we run this for ethane, as we've been running for our uh, bonds and angle scripts thus far, let's see what we get in terms of our torsion angles in our ethane molecule. So I'm going to do E, ethane, shift, enter. And then we get our um, collapse that, click on the left. We get our XYZ file repeated to us, seven bonds once again, just as above, 12 bond angles just as above, and we have nine distinct torsion angles, all of them basically at a perfect uh, staggered orientation of either 60, negative 60, or 180 degrees.